This week on the show, we have musician Abel Hart, whose single Whisper went viral on Spotify's 50 Viral and on TikTok with over 200 million plays. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about understanding that you cannot expect your old way of thinking to reap new results. Change your thinking, change your life. Research shows that 80% of our thoughts are negative and 95% of our thoughts are repetitive. If 95% of our thoughts are repetitive, this means that the same thoughts that are holding you back are playing on a loop in your mind, giving you the exact same results. When we look at this statistic, it gives us room to shift our awareness and be more conscious of what we are deciding to focus our attention on. So how do we change this to get better results and replace these thoughts with new beliefs? The best way to start reprogramming your mind is to begin by training your mind to replace words like, it's not possible, I can't, I'm not ready, to empowering beliefs like, I can, I am ready, and I am open and receiving to all the abundance life has to offer. When we begin shifting repetitive thoughts with empowering beliefs and statements, we start to feel happier and more empowered, which automatically begins attracting better results. Make it your mission today to decide that the shift in your mindset begins today and use daily affirmations to change your inner dialogue to our empowering thoughts. As Norman Vincent Peale quotes, change your thoughts and you change your world. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break, I want to talk about your music. I love that your your new song, Money, is actually, I know it's actually um, tuned to the frequency of abundance. So talk to us about your song and how you were able to do that. Uh, it started with affirming statements with cool beats. And then I was like, oh my gosh, the one thing that I know has really benefited me for years, I put on like frequencies that night and I have done this for probably over a decade now, which is crazy. but. Uh, I put on like nighttime affirming statements with uh, frequencies and they're just like they're just loops on YouTube, you know, like not sometimes like eight hours long, nine hours long. I just put the longest one on even if I don't sleep, but it's the first thing that I hear when I wake up and mm -hmm. it's still going. And it's because we're trying to essentially as human beings, we, if we want to live a life that we've always wanted. We have to completely become someone completely different, right? Yeah. It's just so that's how that's how it started. And I was like, I could. Okay, so I have this affirming statement with these cool beats. Oh, I'll just take all the things in this wave of like affirming statements and start to like tweak, go into the EQ and start to tweak um, a lot of these frequencies. And there's many ways to do it, but long-windedly, that, that's how that came about. Next up on the show, we have Miami-based musician Abel Hart. Abel rose to fame when his song Whisper went viral on Spotify's 50 Viral and on TikTok with over 200 million plays. Abel is using his platform to promote self-love, self-empowerment, and help you manifest your dreams by creating music that is tuned in the frequency of abundance. I'm manifesting all things good. Money coming to me, money running to me. Tuned into the frequency, the bass, keep it booming. Feeling superhuman, I ain't never losing. Money coming to me in abundance, keep it moving. Abel, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? Good. I appreciate you having me. Seriously, thank you so much. Um, I love. We briefly spoke before this. Um, for one, I'm doing. I'm doing great. But yeah, I love having the opportunity to to, to talk uh, to as many people as possible um, about things that I'm sure we're going to get into. So I appreciate you having me. Absolutely. I was telling you that I discovered your music on TikTok. I'm a big fan of your work. So before we get into how your music went viral, I want to get into, I know that you were on your way to an Olympic snowboarding career, but you did have an injury that held you back. So tell us about that pivotal moment in your life. Um, definitely. Yeah. Snowboarding was, uh, was my everything. It was my life, but, uh, unfortunately, but really not. Now I look at it as it was the best thing that never happened to me. So, but at the time it didn't feel like that. Right. So I guess going a little into it, I used to snowboard, uh, I used to travel the world for snowboarding and compete. Um, it was one thing in my life that kind of just clicked. It made sense. It was, it, yeah, it just made sense, you know, and it was the first thing. And I was very young at the time. I was probably maybe around between six and eight, like time frame is a little blurry for me, but around six and eight. And the first time I ever went, my mom took myself and my cousins to go get, you know, lessons. And when we went to go get lessons, 
the snowboard coach gave my mom back the money. He was like, he doesn't need to like learn lessons, you know, like he's good, which I think to her too is a big like, oh, wow. You know, like he's naturally gifted in this area. So uh, fast forward, I just started going to the mountain. My mom took out a second job and started working at the mountain so she could get me a ski, a ski lift pass. And I did that for a couple of years and then started to get really good. And then she started talking to other people and they were like, if you really want to take it to the next level, you have to start competing. So it became that kind of thing. And I was always super, this is something I've struggled throughout my life with, but very, very, very like insecure. And what are people going to think of me? And oh no, I'm doing things and stage fright and in front of people it was always a big, big thing that I've had to work through throughout my life and still consistently do. But yeah, I just started competing. And then that led one thing led to the next. And I started traveling all over and then started, you know, throughout sponsorships and working with other teams, started competing. Then with snowboarding or any extreme sport, sport in general, but definitely extreme sport, breaking bones just comes with the territory, right? Yeah. It's like, that's just what happens. Um, and then you recover, you know, it's like, oh, you break a shoulder or your leg or your arm or whatever the case may be. But it was one of the worst injuries I had and it was my lower back. So I fractured my lower back and that definitely put me out. So it was like a combination of that and then the time, the rehabilitation time to get better. It was my purpose like that's what i felt right and in my head and being younger i was very fortunate to be able to be gifted and to pick up something so naturally but it was then taken away from me so i felt like i say i got like the case of like oh like i don't want to do this i don't want to do that if i can't do what i love and what i'm passionate about then i don't want to do anything i mean it was i mean it was young you know so a lot of hurt came from that and yeah i just uh, I just fell into the wrong people, places and things because I was in what we'll get into, you know, I was in that frequency. I totally get it. I mean, when things don't go as planned or when we have a dream and it doesn't happen, we sometimes see it in the moment as as something bad, but really it's leading us to something better. You know, everything happens for a reason. So I can totally relate to that. And, you know, I know that you kind of suffer through depression and addiction during that time because, you know, you were you were off track, as you mentioned. So when did you have your aha moment and kind of um, see the light at the end of the tunnel? I wish it was very quick and I was like, oh, I made some mistakes and, and I like messed up over here. And then I had an aha moment. Um, my aha moment uh, was just hitting rock bottom year after year after year after year and then starting to get better and then hitting rock bottom again, even worse and continuously digging myself further than six feet under every single time. So I think as human beings, we we come up with great excuses to hold us back from the things we want most in this world. And the hard part is a lot of those excuses are valid. You know, like they're just, they make sense. You know, it's like, well, mm -hmm. I always use the gym as an example, but just cause it's mo most translated, it's just easy to understand. But like, say you commit to going to the gym and you start going throughout that week, like this is your new thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like say it's a new year's resolution or whatever it may be. This is your new thing. You're going to the gym. So you start to go one, two days, three days, four days. And then like the fourth day, you're like, oh my gosh, you know, like I'm really, it hurts because you don't want to hurt yourself. You know, but it's like, maybe I'll, I'm going to take the day off. I know I said I was going to continue through the whole week and then take a day off, but I just, I don't want to, I don't want to hurt myself in the future. Like, cause I want to stay on this routine. You committed to this, go to the gym, but don't hurt yourself in whatever, like if it's your arm or if it's anything else, like I'm not condoning hurting yourself, but this is a commitment to yourself. That is the most important part of any of this. In my story, it was just excuse after, like excuse after excuse after excuse. And it was the next rock bottom. I was like, oh, I could see, I see why this negative thing ended up happening in my life. Or I ended up in jail or I ended up somewhere. I was like over and over. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to do it this way this time. That's why that messed up. I'm going to do it this way. And then that won't happen. And I could still get what I want, mm -hmm. you know, like yeah. going after things. Uh, it was until I don't know what number, like I've been in and out of probably like 12 to 15 different treatments and, and long treatments. It's not like, you know, you go there for a weekend, uh, um, until I exhausted all my excuses. Yeah. Um, and that's definitely, unfortunately how it was for me in my life until I hit the point. I was like, like I am the cause and the effect of all my life decisions. Like, and I can't trust myself, which is a scary place to be as an individual. 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, Tony Robbins says in life, you need inspiration or desperation. So sometimes we have to be in those desperate moments to really, as you said, make a change in, in your life. And I was reading a study recently that 80% of our thoughts are negative and 95% of our thoughts are repetitive. So really it's the same loop of thoughts unless you start thinking differently right we're stuck in that loop so i'm glad that you shared your story and you're using your platform to inspire because i think a lot of people can relate to that it's just being stuck in that place or hitting rock bottom and then deciding you know what i can't do this anymore i need to make a different decision so i like that you share that i know that music was also your therapy it was something that really got you through a tough time so talk to us about how music was a channel for you to heal yeah, definitely. I mean, music for sure changed my life. It was one of those things like after losing, right, coming from snowboarding, after losing snowboarding and then just being in the ins and outs of the wrong people, places, things and making those negative choices based off of the negative frequency that I was in for so long. Um, music. Now, <laughs> this story is kind of funny because my now my, my dad was a musician. He's also does everything like mix, master, produce, sound design, engineer, sings, plays guitar, like he does everything. Uh, so you would think even before snowboarding, that's what I would do. Or like, yeah. you know, I grew up, my dad had his setup and I, as, as a baby, my mom would bring me around to him playing at all the clubs and events and venues. So you think it would just be such a thing, but it wasn't like that for me. Again, I grew up very, very insecure, like just within myself and who I was. And it's been a, it's been, been a journey to say the least, but I never thought of it music of being a thing like I know my dad did it but like it wasn't and sometimes he'd have me like come down or like try and sing or do something in the microphone and I would just I was so insecure it would be so bad in my head like even if he said it was good I was like no it's not you know like it's not good and I would get frustrated so I just would never do it but I was mm -hmm. just really insecure <laughs> yeah you know like it's it's funny but it's not funny but like that's just kind of what a lot of people go through um and that was definitely my story so you know like I wanted to do good and so I tried something different and I went out and I met up with him and I'd never experienced nightlife like ever just out of insecurity I think like I just yeah. don't want to walk into a club or a bar or something like what are people going to say about me you know like it's crazy yeah. like no one's no one's even focused on you bro like be quiet <laughs> you know but this this thing in our head that we could create that's just not even real uh, so I went and I was like oh I felt how I was like oh my gosh what is I want to be what is this? You know, like what is like the music and it was house music it was before like house music even was close to being on the radio. And I never, you know, I'd listen to that stuff snowboarding when I snowboard, I would listen to it because it's just upbeat and it's yeah. we talk about positive frequency and and especially at that time and where music was, I was just like, I don't know what this is, but like I just want to be a part of this. You know, whatever. Like and I felt I'd never felt ever from snowboarding. I I don't even think I had that. I definitely didn't have that understanding that young when I first started snowboarding, but I don't even think I had like that much of a spiritual experience around snowboarding as I did in that moment. So long story short, uh, little by little, I started going, sometimes I would drive all the way up to New York city three times a week and just go there. So I was like, uh, who can I talk to? Who can I meet? Like, how do I do this? You know, like what, and I didn't even know what it was that I wanted to do. I just want to be a part of something. I was like, oh, do we be a promoter or a DJ or what, you know, where, what do I do and how do I, make it as big as possible. How do I make other people most importantly feel I want I want to put other people on this. Like that's how I felt. You ever listen to a great like a song that you hear for the first time and like, oh, my, you got to send it to this person and this person yeah. and this person or you see, see a movie and you're like, oh, you have to like the way it affected me. You and it's just I think organic when you feel that you want to put other people on that because mm -hmm. that internally fulfilled you. Yeah, absolutely. And, mm -hmm. I voice this a lot because I think it's very important and I don't want people to watch whether it is this or anything else that I do or that they watch other people do that just looks like talent. Mm -hmm. um, to me, the definition of talent is just hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of beating at your craft, whatever it is. Um, yeah. It wasn't my experience. I thought I could jump in at that moment to production. I could pick it up on the computer. Ooh, it just makes sense. And I could do whatever I wanted. That wasn't my experience. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, Holy moly, I don't understand any of this. You know, it almost drove, it, I mean, it definitely drove me insane. I have to do this. This has to make sense to me. Um, and that's kind of how I say more, more so serendipitously, music found me more than I found found it. Yeah, uh, speaking about music, I know that your, your song Whisper was on the Spotify's top 50. 
as well as I know it's got over 200 million uh, views and streams on social media. So how has it been to see that people really resonate with your music? Uh, yeah, yeah it, it, <laughs> I wish I had a perfect word. It's just, it's, <laughs> it's amazing. It definitely yeah. is amazing. But I think when, especially when their first experience of, you know, you, you work so much at something and you really like manifest this, like this has to happen. There's no other, I don't have a, um, a plan B because it distracts from plan A, like this is what it is. And then those moments actually come into reality. Uh, it's just, uh, at first it's just weird. You're, you're just like, oh my gosh, like I'm living. I'm doing everything, yeah. <laughs> you know, that I envisioned, I dreamed, and, it, and it's an amazing feeling, but it's, I say it's a weird one because you can't put words to it. Like, but I think what's important to take home is like for anyone listening is like, I had to live in that reality before it was reality. Like the definition of fake it till you make it. And that was something I was so against, uh, like in and out of treatment and people trying to like mentor or give advice. You know, like fake it to make it, you know, do these things, do these things and they'll catch on. You'll have a better understanding. I was like, I don't want to fake anything. You yeah. know, it's like, I'm going to get better. I'm going to go deep down. I'm going to dig into the stuff that I don't want to even dig down into. I'm, I'm not going to fake it, but I definitely didn't have the awareness at that point, as far as you talk about law of attraction manifestation or, or being in that frequency, because it's a real thing it is, it is not magic. I'm not the only one like sitting here, like spewing this stuff, right? There's now, fortunately, like you were saying, it's, it's now becoming so much of a wave that not only in, you know, music, but as well as uh, the science community, you know, which yeah. I know nothing about science, I'm horrible at math, but <laughs> it's a real thing, point being, you know, like if you, if you want to know enough about it, you can like research it. Like there's, there's valid research out there about it. So that's what, you know, that's what all this really was for me. I was like, fake it till you make it. So I'm going to pretend like, how does it feel? Yeah, you know? yeah, absolutely. That's the thing with the law of attraction that people don't understand is that it really starts. It's all about your self concept and how you feel about yourself. And once your self concept is high and you feel worthy, then you start seeing that in your outside world. Right. It, it doesn't work the other way around. You first have to believe yeah. it and feel it and then you see it. And I can completely relate to, uh, you know, it, it's a weird feeling when you actually see your dreams happening and you're living it because you you already knew it was going to happen. but when you when the moment actually comes it's a incredible feeling so <laughs> i can uh completely... it is. are you big on the manifest are you big oh, on that the yeah way i've had a lot of uh, manifestation coaches on my show and i'm i've manifested my own show so <laughs> i definitely I <laughs> yeah so i definitely relate to that there's there's been times in my life where i interview people and i'm like wow i can't believe i'm doing this because i thought about this at a point in my life and now it's happening but i always believed i could deep down i always knew it would happen so it manifested but that's why i always tell my viewers you have to really believe it and you have to work on your self-concept and when you really believe in yourself the it's going to be reflected in the outside world so um and i love yeah. i want to talk about your music i love that your your new song money is actually i know it's actually um tuned to the frequency of abundance so talk to us about your song and how you were able to do that uh yeah so definitely so that's a that's a newer like this is a, a wave of like newer stuff for me. So I've been in the last like year or so, cause it started like the music full circle, I guess, able heart, the project, able heart, the meaning. My mom's always said, you're able to do anything your heart desires. So oh. it's like able heart. And I wanted at the beginning, if like anyone out there, uh, you know, if you deep dive into the actual catalog of the music, when it first started, it was completely opposite of how it is now. Now, the reason that I haven't taken that down um, and the reason that I did that in the first place was I wanted to be honest, you know, like I wasn't living in the best situation and like I was creating these issues for myself. And there's a lot of glorification around the things that are definitely negative in this world. But when like the glorification comes from when something benefits, just like we kind of spoke, and it could work in the negative way too as well. When something affects you and like fills that void, especially and unfortunately when it third party when it's external from you you just like want to glorify it you, you know it's yeah. unfortunate but you don't have the awareness enough to know that's not sustainable and it's not a real thing um you know it's just a temporary solution to a permanent problem a permanent problem being yeah. a spiritual malady a spiritual malady being the lack the void that you're feeling on the inside that you're looking to fulfill externally yeah and so I wanted to be honest because I saw when this project started, I was like, I see, I just need to get this out. You, you mentioned it earlier. It was a way of me 
it was almost therapeutic what I felt at the time. I, I'm going to express the way that I feel. I'm just going to completely on paper. I never wrote before either. I'm just going to completely open up and be vulnerable about everything, you know, and just put it out to the world. What could happen, you know? Um, and that's what I did. And I was like, then this is, I'm going to write about the truth so that if anyone deep dives into the project, they could see the full circle picture that if I went through it and I did it and I had to go through these things that they could also relate to. And then they got to see that end result that it would somewhat give them hope. And, you know, if anything, I started doing positive in the last year, like positive affirming statements, but like cool beats. That's what like allowed me to be like, I'll do it. You know, like it's, it's important to do, but I need to, I need it to, and I believe that I'm here to resonate as with as many people as possible. And it's like translate. I don't believe it's just like a niche. You know, yeah. I believe at least the message that comes from me, I don't believe it's just like a niche group full of people. And I make sure to be very aware of that. My job would be a lot easier. Started with affirming statements to long windedly answer your question. Uh, it started with affirming statements with cool beats. And then I was like, oh my gosh, the one thing that I know has really benefited me for years, I put on like frequencies that night. And I have done this for probably over a decade now, which is crazy. But uh, I put on like nighttime affirming statements with uh, frequencies and they're just like, they're just loops on YouTube, you know, like not sometimes like eight hours long, nine hours long. I just put the longest one on, even if I don't sleep, but it's the first thing that I hear when I wake up. And I just found out the word manipulation is not a bad thing. Like societally, it's just like, oh, don't manip manipulate. You know, because I was trying to understand and explain this. I was like, mm. I just wanted to like in a positive way, manipulate, but manipulate is essentially doing something in a skillful manner, right? Yeah. There's also de definitely different definitions. How are you going to try and manipulate me into the life I've always wanted? I just don't believe someone would get upset by it. You know? Yeah, <laughs> I don't. Um, but that's how it started. And I was like, oh, I'll just take all the things in this wave of like affirming statements and start to like tweak, go into the EQ and start to tweak. Um, a lot of these frequencies and there's many ways to do it, but long windedly, that, that's how that came about. Yeah. I like that you said that you also listen to, um, frequencies because I also do every night I listen to subliminals, <laughs> uh, different ones for abundance and I s fall asleep to it and I see the results. And the thing is, it's just a frequency. There's no words. So I can completely relate to that of listening to that because it's amazing what those frequencies do to your subconscious mind, right? They really start to reprogram them without you thinking. And most of our thinking is from our subconscious mind, right? So when we reprogram that, that's when that's when the real magic happens. I want to talk about the, your song Money, though, because I feel like who doesn't want to manifest money into their life? So how does this song tap into the frequency of abundance and help you to manifest while listening to it? Yeah, definitely. And I totally agree with what you just said. You don't also believe that anyone else would also want, which I, which I do believe because at the end of the day, what is, what really is money outside of energy, <clears throat> excuse me, it's, it's freedom, you know, allowance of freedom to do right. We have this misconception, I think societally for the most that money's bad or you did something bad to get money. If that person has money, it's just not good. At least that's also how, you know, I kind of grew up, unfortunately. Uh, and again, my, there's nothing bad with my parents. I love my parents. Uh, but they were taught different, you know? So, um, but yeah, money, I was like, okay, I just kind of researching uh, different frequencies, you know, and how can I kind of do this? And that was the first song that started this next wave of all the ones that I've been putting out and different frequencies, there's like tons, you know, as you know, I mean, you listen to it at night. So there's just so many different types of frequencies. That's where it started. I was like, I'll do it with this. And then I'll add the affirming statements and uh, yeah, tune a lot of the EQ and the frequencies to that and just kind of have fun doing that, especially because meditate meditation has also changed my life. It's it's fun and interesting to also cre try and create content around certain things, because at the end of the day, any creative and I'm sure I mean, you get it, it's like at the end of the day, we're also at the algorithms whim unless we want to spend like millions and millions of dollars and pushing something, you know, which is totally a real thing, too. But I don't believe it hits and reaches as as well as it does organically. I love what I do and I just want like other people to feel this, you know, because I know it's real and it's changed my life. That was like purely my intention. And I sit with that and I, I need speaking even before we hop on here. It's like, what's my intention? What do I want to say? And who do I hope to resonate with? Right. Very simple, straight to the point. And but I wasn't realizing within that I listened to the song. I don't know how many times. Right. I have to make the whole thing over on loop, on loop, on loop, on loop. And I'm like, yes, it's going to help people on loop. And then 
I wasn't even realizing it, knowing this and having the awareness. What since I've done that has come into my life. Yeah. Like, like I mean, like this is all recent. Oh, and then it's happened. And I was like, holy moly, like this really works. But then I was like, oh my gosh, because I was listening to the same exact thing that I've been trying to say works. Like I, yeah. as if I didn't know that, you know? <laughs> Your, your own music yeah. helps you manifest and 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 subconsciously yeah. uh reprogrammed your own mind to manifest money <laughs> i think that's yeah, interesting. Like, if you the next level. yeah it's, it's amazing and seriously that's wild yeah i think that a lot of people resonate with your music because you're authentic you have a different style as well it's not like anything that i've really seen out there and i think because your messaging is pure it's about self-love it's a, and you're also very vulnerable with your journey uh, i think that's why people really resonate with your music because they see that it's from an authentic place so i, I see in the comments people saying they manifested things from listening to your music which or that you've helped them on their journey so that must feel uh, very rewarding for you um yeah i mean it's, it's, it, that's a weird thing too uh i don't i mean I don't at all definitely take credit for that, right? It's like, at the end of the day, it's the person, I get to do what I love and that's what I hope it resonates. And if I'm like the channel through that, at the end of the day, it, that was still their choice. Like if they heard it and they're like, okay, like this could change my life. And then they never listen to it or made sure they set an alarm to listen to it every single day or whether that's my song or anything else positive that they're working towards in their life. It has nothing to do with me or any other positive thing that was set up for them to make that move, right? So I think it's important, like, because pride, pride or being proud of was a was a weird one for me. Like, and just, it's still something that I work on. It's like, oh, like I'm proud of myself. Like just societally, it's like, oh, you, oh, he's so gr like happy. Like him or I th feel like people deal with that. And I definitely did. I was like, I don't want to let anybody know that I'm like super proud of myself and I love myself uh, because then it's going to come off narcissistic or, or very egotistical in that sense. Mm -hmm. But it's not like I, I, I only wish and hope that as many people as possible could for one love themselves because that's yeah. that was a journey for me and for two like be proud of themselves for working for it even if it hasn't happened yet just mm -hmm. have to understand it's on its way bigger than you could possibly imagine but be proud of yourself for those little steps and of course we make hiccups or we stumble along the way but like you have to also believe it <coughs> excuse me more than anybody else yeah right like you have just like you, your show, everything that you've manifested into your life. If you would have been like, I want to manifest and I sit here and then you don't make any of the moves or do any of the things that are necessary in order to allow that manifestation to be presented into your life to make those choices. Yeah, uh, that's on you, you know, mm -hmm. but being proud is what's a weird one for me, but it's on them. It's not does it, it makes me feel even more grateful is probably the best way to answer uh, your question towards how I feel when I see those things. Uh, I'm just like, that's what it's about, you know? Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Like, that's what I love. Absolutely. I think it's great to be proud of yourself because, you know, as you said, we are the ones, you are the one, whoever is putting in the work, it's like really us doing it. So, I mean, if you're not giving yourself a pat on the back and being your biggest cheerleader, then I mean, who's going to do it for you, right? So I think being proud of yourself is definitely very important to do because, you know, you you did the hard work, so you you deserve that reward. So <laughs> I think that yeah, uh, sometimes we just have to true. give ourselves a pat on the back. Yeah, a thousand percent. And you know, Abel, I created my platform to inspire, to uplift, and to showcase that anything is possible by showcasing success stories like yours. So I want to ask you for anyone that's going through a difficult time in their life, maybe they're, they lost their job, maybe they were going through a breakup, or they're just not feeling motivated. What would you say to inspire and uplift them? Uh, everything is like, this is something that I feel like when I try and speak, I try to also speak to my past self that like, I wish I had better advice for, uh, definitely. Uh, but everything, everything is temporary for one. You're not alone. I think most importantly, because when you're in it, right, good and bad, but especially bad, you feel like it's going to be forever and things aren't going to change. It seems like you've tried everything. You are not alone in the journey of that, like speaking to directly who is literally watching or listening to this that's something i wish i like understood more um but even in the points like you could hear someone say that when you're at your lowest and be like well it sure as heck feels like it's going to be forever because it hasn't gone away in x amount of time uh but it is and it's uh, and everything is also temporary yeah you know like the the bad just as much as the good so it's like 
if I, I know that, that's like all we know as human beings, right? And we're also never we're not going to be here for forever. But if I do know, and this is what helped me to kind of answer one of the first questions you asked me, uh, when was that like moment? You know, if, if I know everything is temporary, all I know, let's say this, all, all I know is that I don't want to feel the way that I felt every single day. And I'm willing to do anything not to feel that way. Yeah. Like it's that deep for me. I've done it so long and I felt this so long and I tried to take advice and I tried to run the show essentially mm -hmm. and thinking that I knew the answers for all the things and how to get there. Yet I kept showing in my life, I had to sit with myself and be like, I have no one else to blame. Like, and I did yeah. for a long time. And I think there's a valid reason and, and tons of people myself as others included and everyone has a different journey. I would never take that away from anybody else. But I think when we separate ourselves and trying to make outcasts of like, I hear your story, but it, it's not like mine. It's not as bad as mine was, or I'm not as bad as you. Like there's always two sides of the coin, right? But mm -hmm. once we start, we could start, and this is what definitely helped me. Uh, I started relating to people's stories. I'm like, okay, I wasn't that bad, you know, but I don't want to become that bad or I'm way worse than that. But I, I haven't gone through that yet. Mm -hmm. Like that particular thing. Okay. So what, like, please help me understand, you know, like what, what do you, what do you, what do you suggest my next moves? Um, yeah, those two things. I mean, you're not alone. Everything is temporary. And if I know that I don't want to feel the way that I felt every single day, I did, how do I, I just want to be happy. I don't want to be chasing happiness. I don't want to be like, all I want to stri strive for is happiness because therefore if I'm always striving for it and heading towards it, therefore I never have it yeah. in the moment. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's what I know. Like I sit with myself and be like, I just want to feel good. Like, I just want to feel amazing. Like in this moment, like, I don't want to be thinking about the past. I don't want to be like, think about what is going to happen in the future. Wishing I could have changed the past. I want to feel good here. Like the meat of all of this for anybody. This is the one thing I believe that like that's for everybody. The conversation you and I are having right now, like this, the back and forth with the hopes and the potential of that the future, when someone hears it, it will help and resonate with them. Right. But yeah. the conversation that we're purely having in this moment, this is the meat, like this is the juice. Yeah. I would say, Hey, like it's, it's going to be okay. And it's happening. Um, we just figure out a way to continuously, you know, put yourself in the next best position to move forward. Yeah, I think a lot of people will be inspired by this interview um, because they'll see, you know, they see you on social media, they see you confident doing these fun videos um, and they think you, you know, you're successful and everything like that and that, you know, but they, they're not getting the backstory of how you got there, that it, was, it wasn't easy, that you had to do a lot of self-work and, and I think that when people hear that, it's really going to inspire them to know that it's possible for them too. So thank you for sharing all of that information with me because I think that it will definitely inspire someone out there that's going through a difficult time. And Abel, I want to ask you, what else are you currently working on? What are your current projects? Uh, definitely, yeah, uh, making, I would like to make this a collective of just EPs and continuous music as far as the frequency and affirming statements. Um, and yeah, I really enjoy making content for it too. Sometimes I do like silly skits. I have a, uh, uh, I'm a child, you know, essentially. <laughs> but we talk about, you know, inner, inner child too is so important, but uh, I do. I feel like a big kid consistently and yeah, I just want to continuously put out as much like positive energy, whether it's affirming statements, whether it's more frequency music, uh, funny, you know, funny content or meaningful content within some of the like more serious frequencies uh, just to resonate. Like I said earlier, I just believe I've been put on here for a bigger purpose than I even realized. And I'm just trying to work in alignment of that. There'll be times where I want to do something else, you know, and trust me, I still go. It's a daily reprieve. It's something. It's not like I had to go through all these things and all these things happened in my life. And now I'm finally here and everything just works itself out. Right. Like, you, you know, just as well as I like, it doesn't work like that. That would yeah. be nice. Mm -hmm. Would it though? You know, mm -hmm. like, would we still have the same amount of appreciation? I still have to step back and be like, why am I doing this? Like, whatever it is, you know, just like moving through life and things even outside of music. Why am I doing this? And like, what, what's the end result? Like I hope to get from this. And then why do I want that? Mm -hmm. And it's a weird thing sometimes. Cause I, I truly believe like, I don't want to even have to ask myself that question, but I need to. So I have the awareness on how to make the best choices along that path. But yeah, it'd be making uh, more, just as much music and content as possible moving forward. 
Amazing. Well, congratulations, Abel, on all your success. We're going to link your music below for all of our viewers to listen to. And we're going to manifest a huge record deal for you. So we see you at like the MTV Awards or something like that, because I think that's in store for you next. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Seriously. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.